name is Trevor Sullivan. I wanted to take a few moments today to talk to you about regular expressions in PowerShell. Now, the nice thing about working with an object-oriented shell like PowerShell is that a lot of the parsing work is done for you, unlike text-oriented shells like Bash. So because we're working with native objects in PowerShell, we can often reference different properties that describe our object without having to parse those properties out of a text-based field or row in our output from a command. So what I wanted to do today is talk about the rare cases where you will have to break down into regular expressions. Regular expressions still can be extremely useful in PowerShell. They're still first-class citizens, um, which is great. However, the nice thing is that we just have to use them less often. However, let's explore how you can get started with regular expressions. So I've got Microsoft Visual Studio Code in front of me right now. As you can see, I am on a Mac OS system. In case you're unaware, PowerShell actually does run natively on Mac OS, which is pretty cool. Uh, that started back in about August of 2016. So Microsoft open sourced PowerShell. They took the .NET platform and made it cross-platform. Uh, so it runs natively on Linux, Mac, and Windows now. So uh, you can install Visual Studio Code, install PowerShell, and there's a really cool extension for PowerShell on uh, Visual Studio Code as well that gives you nice functionality like syntax highlighting and a bunch of other cool stuff. All right, so I've got VS Code in front of me. I'm gonna go ahead and just start by creating a new file. Now, when you create a new file in VS Code, you'll see that it's an untitled file and the icon next to it is pretty generic. It's just kind of a generic code icon. So we're not currently in the PowerShell mode. So the default keyboard shortcut that you want to use to change into the PowerShell mode is gonna be Command K and then M. So you're gonna hit Command K let go of command and hit the M key. And that'll bring up the shortcut to enter the language mode. So you can just start typing. So I can just type pow and you'll see it filters down to PowerShell now. So I'll change the file mode to PowerShell. And you now can see that we have this nice little PowerShell code icon next to our file, which indicates that we're in the correct language mode. Now there's also a status bar that's typically shown at the bottom of Visual Studio Code, at the bottom of your screen. I've disabled that for now, but if I did have that enabled, you would also see the, the current language mode in there. So you would see that it says PowerShell as well. So now that we've got our PowerShell file open here, let's start by exploring the basics of regular expressions. And the first thing you wanna do is get familiar with the dash match operator. So let's say you have a string like, I want to go for a walk. Okay, and you want to see if this string starts with an I. Like all you care about is, you know, does this sentence start with an I? And the way that you do that in regular expressions is, is to match the beginning of a string or the beginning of a, of a line, you use the caret character. So hit shift six on your keyboard. And anything you type after that is immediately going to follow the starting character on the line. So I can do capital I, and if I hit function F8, or just hit F8 if you're on a Windows computer or perhaps a Linux computer, uh, that'll just run the current line that my cursor is on in VS Code. And as you can see, my integrated terminal pops up down here, and it ran this line of PowerShell code, and I got a result of true. So this regular expression that I wrote here on the right-hand side of the match operator correctly match the string that I fed it on the left. So it does start with I. Now let's say that I wanted to make sure that this sentence ended with a K. Okay, so we looked at the caret operator, which allows us to match the starting line or the, the starting character on a line. But now if we want to match the final character of a line, what you can do is type the character that you're looking for followed by a dollar sign. So the dollar sign indicates that we are going to terminate the current line that we're on. So this should also, if we do function F8, this also returns true because our sentence here ends with K and then a line terminator. So let's go ahead and just change this to something that won't match. So let's say we wanted our sentence to end in P. Well, if we run this, we get a false result and that's because our sentence ends in K, not with a P. 
So as you can see, these are just some basics of regular expressions. Now, if you don't want to match the beginning or the end of a line, you can also match anywhere in between the beginning and end of a line by simply typing a few characters that you're looking for. So let's say that I just wanted to make sure that this string, somewhere in the string, I don't care exactly where, if it's at the beginning, the end, the second, third word, I really don't care where it appears, but I want to make sure that the word go appears somewhere in the string. So what I can do is just type the word go, and the regular expression engine is going to search for the text go somewhere inside of that string. So if I do function f8, again, you can see down here in the integrated terminal, I have a true, a Boolean true result. So my string did match go. Now let's say that you uh, had a word going, okay? If I hit function f8, you see that I get a true result again. So what's happening here is that it's detecting the regular expression engine sees go. So it sees a g followed by an O, and it's saying, yes, I do see that. Yes, I'm going to return a true result for that. Now, unfortunately, in this case, the word here is actually going, not go. So if you want to match white space around the word to make sure that it's actually just the standalone word go with spaces around it, then you can literally just put spaces around your regular expression that you're searching for. So let's do function f8 here. And you can see that now the word going no longer matches the go because I'm expecting there to be a space a G, an O, and then a space. And that does not match because I have a space, a G, an O, and then an I, not another space. So that's why that gets a false, false value. So if I take out the ING and go back to having just the word go as a standalone word, you can now see that I get a true result there. So that's all fine and dandy. So there's one other significant uh, difference with um, matching regular expressions that I wanted to talk about. And so in this case, all we've done so far is match a single string. However, what if you feed it more than one string? So what if I feed it a string array? So let's, let's add another sentence. Let's say, I'm gonna create an array here by wrapping this in the at open parentheses, close parentheses, and then I'll just add another element to the array here and say, you are going to the store. Okay, so now we have two different sentences in a PowerShell array. Uh, each element is a string, and we're going to match each of those strings against the regular expression on the right. Now, look at the difference in the output when we execute this. So if I hit function F8, look at the result. I no longer got a true or false result, because I fed it an array, what it's actually doing is it's iterating over each item in the array on the left-hand side of the match operator, and it's match it's it's running that regular expression on the right-hand side of the match operator against each of the strings in my array. So what's happening is it's basically returning to me any string that does have a positive match. So it's not giving me a Boolean true or false, yes or no. It's saying, yes, this string returned, or sorry, this string matched, and I'm going to return that entire string to you so that you can do further processing on it. So keep in mind that when you're using the match operator in PowerShell, you can either match against a singleton string or you can match against an array of strings. And if you do a singleton string, you're going to get a Boolean true false value. Whereas if you match against an array, you're going to get the actual string returned if it matches. Now, if no strings match, so let's let's change this word to going again. If no strings match, you're going to get an empty output. You're not going to see anything returned. You're not going to get a false or anything like that. It'll just be an empty output. So keep that in mind with these string arrays. So one other thing I wanted to cover is going back to the singleton string. So I'm going to bring this back down to our original here. I want to go for a walk, match to go. Now, what we didn't do is we didn't actually extract our match from our string. So we got the true and false result, which tells us if our string matched our expression, but we didn't actually extract the expression that we detected 
uh, from the string and actually return it to our program. Now, in this case, it's not very useful because we're actually matching a static string. But let's say that I wanted to match G followed by any word character. Um, I could do a slash W, which in regular expression parlance means uh, any single word character. So typically like A through Z and things like that. Um, so let's go ahead and run this. And you can see that this does match. So I have a space followed by a G, followed by a slash W, which is again a word character, followed by another space. So what is this word character? It could be an O, it could be an I, right? I could hit F8 again and say GI also matches G slash W. So how do I extract if it's GO or GI or G whatever? How do I actually get that value from my regular expression? Well, when you run the match operator in PowerShell and it returns a true value, a Boolean true, what's going to happen is there's a special variable called matches. And this matches variable will get populated when you use the match operator and it returns a true result. So if we just hit F, uh, function F8 to execute line number three here and inspect this matches variable, you can see that match number zero, so I could have one or more matches, or actually technically zero or more matches, but in this case, I do have a match and match number zero, the, uh, the first element in the array is GI. Now, if I change my GI back to go, and rerun that, I get a true result from the match operator. And then if I inspect the matches variable again, you can see that my match value is now go. So I'm dynamically matching this word inside of this string by using my regular expression. Now, as you can see here, the matches variable, actually each, each element has a name and a value. So what you wanna do is index into the matches variable, grab the first element, and then it should have it should actually return just the string to you there. Um, I thought it also had a values property here. Yeah, so let's take a look at that. No, nope, that's not right. So if we just do matches zero, uh, that will return the actual string to you. So then we could do dot length, and you'd see that the string length is four because we have a space G O space, and that's four characters. Um, so keep in mind that the matches variable is there. You can also do multiple matches, uh, which I don't want to get into, into too much depth in this particular video, but uh, this, is, this would be a good introduction to how to use PowerShell to match strings against regular expressions. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.